Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Seven-seat electric cars have been in short supply for some time. Other than a handful of fairly short-range van-based options, the Mercedes-Benz EQB had the market to itself for a few years, with the bigger Kia EV9 only arriving last year. And now the new Peugeot E5008 has joined the fray. Based on Peugeot parent company Stellantis's new SDLA medium platform, the third-generation 5008 comes as a 1.2-liter petrol hybrid, a 1.6-petrol plug-in hybrid, with an electric-only range of 48 miles, or a full EV, which we're focusing on here. Called the E5008, it has a nickel-manganese cobalt battery of either 73 kWh or 96 kWh in capacity. The big battery version will arrive in early 2025 with a WLTP range of up to 410 miles. Deliveries of a dual-motor 73 kWh model will start at a similar time, with 311 miles of official range, despite having four-wheel drive and 318 brake horsepower. The single-motor 73 kWh model will likely be the biggest seller. It's turning up this summer and manages the same 311 miles of range, although all of the WLTP figures are yet to be finalized. Charging speeds max out at 160 kilowatts, which is claimed to be good enough for 62 miles of range in 10 minutes or 20 to 80% in 30 minutes. Not bad, but also nothing that's going to worry Tesla, Kia or Hyundai. Design and Styling The E5008 isn't the prettiest of Peugeot's rather handsome current lineup, but it does manage a decent balance of proportions, sharp lines and inoffensive modernity, and that geometric wheel design is pretty cool. The ultra-slim LED headlights are a bit squinty for us, and the body-colored grille has now grown to such proportions that it appears the entire front end has become a massive cheese grater. Regardless, nobody is likely to buy the E5008 because it looks great, but they're also very unlikely to be put off by the looks. It's all about the usefulness really, and for that the E5008 is rather impressive. Based very closely on the smaller Peugeot E3008, which also sits on the Stellantis SDLA medium platform, the E5008 is 4.79m long, 1.69m tall and 2.1m wide, including mirrors. Usefully more compact than the Kia EV9, then, and usefully bigger than the Mercedes EQB. And cheaper than both. Initially you can get the E5008 only with a 7-seat layout but Peugeot executives say that a cheaper, 5-seat version is quite likely. The interior We will start at the back of the E5008, because it's the space and versatility that's really going to sell this car. The boot release is hidden in an annoyingly small crevice in between the boot lid and bumper, which can make your fingers very mucky when you're opening the boot. Inside though, it's a happier story, as you get 748 liters of boot space in 5-seat mode including some underfloor storage that's good for your charging cables, and that also has fixing so that you can stow the load bay cover securely out of the way. It really is a properly big spacious boot that will do just fine for your paddleboards, kayaks, kids' bikes, buggies and dogs, although not quite all at once. The middle row folds and slides in a 60-40th split to leave an extended flat load area that gives you more than 2 meters of space, so that's all good for when you have to pick up that dismantled shed that was a total bargain on Facebook Marketplace. Just as impressive is that passenger space. The rearmost seats are best saved for the dexterous, as access is still a bit awkward, if better than in most seven-seaters, thanks to the outer middle seats that tilt and slide forwards in one movement to give maximum space for clambering in. An average height adult in the third row will be okay for short periods, and shoulder, leg and headroom really aren't terrible, but there are no aircon vents back there, nor charging outlets, there's a 12V socket but no USB ports, just a tiny cup holder each, so it's a bit sparse. It's still pretty comfy by mid-sized seven-seat SUV standards though, and the seats fold flat easily when you don't want them. The middle row is spacious too, although anyone over six foot tall may find headroom at a bit of a premium if the car has the panoramic glass roof, as ours did. Still, there's loads of foot and leg space, there are standard climate control furnishings for this row of passengers, and the sliding and reclining seats will keep the kids happy. Gone are the three middle-row Isofix fittings and three equally sized, individually sliding seats of the previous 5008. Peugeot maintains that greater comfort for the two outer passengers was more important for customers, who also want less of an MPV feel and more of an SUV feel. Up front, the dashboard is taken straight from the E3008, 
which means really smart materials and a structured look, with a floating 21 inches panoramic display that houses the touchscreen infotainment system and driving information readout. The configurable eye toggle shortcuts lower down the dash are useful, and while the touchscreen layout may not be quite as intuitive as the system in the Renault Scenic E-Tech Electric, especially the fiddly in-screen climate controls, the tech interface and the driving position are both hugely improved over the previous 5008 and generally promise to be easy to live with. The interior also feels solidly put together, and while you wouldn't say this was up there with Audi, BMW and Mercedes-Benz for perceived quality, it will certainly make Ford, Kia and Renault pay attention. The seats are comfortable too, although the manual seat adjustment feels clunky and cheap, given the high-end feel that Peugeot has striven for in other aspects. Visibility isn't bad for this class of car. Granted, the Skoda Kodiak has a lower shoulder line and better view out to the back, but the E5008 has an appealing proper SUV driving position that sits you high up and gives an imperious view down the road. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel for more exciting car reviews.